Spiritual Teaching 319 Welcome to me once again. Who is manifesting at this time before you? The Father, the Son, or the Holy Spirit? I answer you. Your God is manifested among you. If in the second era I told you as a man, whoever knows the Son knows the Father. Today, that I do not come to you as man, but in spirit, I say to you, who listen to the Messiah, listen to and receive Jehovah, and behold my voice as the Holy Spirit. Do not look at three people or three gods. Look at a single divine spirit that at this time manifests itself among you in fullness and in this voice, in this word of your master of teachers. You will meet the judge. You will discover the father and you will feel the essence of the Holy Spirit. In my last manifestation, you human spokesman, in the present year of 1950, I will test the advancement of my disciples. I will put them to the test to show who is ahead or who is behind in my teaching. I know everything, but the lessons and tests that I give you will be so that each one of you intimately has knowledge of its advance, its stagnation, or its delay. I come to make more and more light in your spirit so that you remain enlightened after the departure of my word and be then, as I have said, luminous beacons in this sea of passion and storms that make up your world. Those who have great faith in me humbly prepare their spirit to receive in it all that I give in this era. But there are still disciples who greatly open the eyes of their spirit, trying to discover in the hereafter the truth of my presence. Still doubt invades some hearts, and they wonder if it will be me or not. Still in some of my words and revelations are often confused and I ask you why, if you are already in the third era. Leave the doubts to Thomas. Remember the lesson that I gave him and all that I manifested at that time to destroy materialism and self-doubt in those men. Today, in which the teachings and revelations of God accumulate in your spirit and in your heart, past times and of the third time, so why do you still doubt? Why do you deliberate deep within you and whether I will be or not? If there will be truth or imposture in this work that you are receiving, I speak like this only to those who doubt, to those who fight inwardly, being found in the aftermath of my manifestation by the understanding of man. And once again, I say to you, blessed are those who, without seeing, have believed. You are commemorating in union with your master Events that happened in the second era, I have taught you that the lesson that I gave you then, I left in your spirit. Each of my works and my words are acts of eternal life that I gave you. The blood that I shed to trace the path of your redemption is still fresh and will be eternally in the spirit of all my children. 
My blood that flowed from my body at that time was an image of the life that I shed, of the forgiveness with which I enveloped all sinners, of the light with which I dispelled all the darkness of this humanity. If I became a man to bring redemption, salvation, and light to men, I not only came to them, it was the time appointed by my Divine Spirit to go in search of all spirits, without any distinction, neither of worlds nor of degrees of elevation. Thus, after completing my mission as teacher among you, my spirit penetrated all the dwellings inhabited by spirits because if you had the promise of the Messiah, that promise was not only for the spirits incarnate, but also for those who awaited me in the hereafter, in their restitution, in their atonement, in the spiritual experience, waiting for the day when, as the Redeemer of all spirits, I would arrive to open the door. After completing my work among you and leaving the doors of my kingdom open with my sacrifice of love to all my children, I went after the other spirits and I also gave them freedom. But I found some in human clothing and to the others with various garments. But truly I tell you, I have never sought such garments. But the elevation of the spirits by cleaning you of imperfections and materialism by purifying you with my doctrine to give you whiter than the snow of which I have spoken much in this time if at that time I look for the one and the other in different dwellings now in the third era I have come to manifest myself in pursuit of all the spirits that dwell in the universe. I have certainly come to bond with love, to communicate with all spirits, but I want my communication to be now more perfect than that of times past, so that through it you may come to me quickly, so that through communication from spirit to spirit, you receive with greater perfection and purity my inspirations, orders, claims, and justice. I have dedicated the third era to enlighten all spirits so that they never fall again, to save the lost, to convert the stubborn, to clean those who have the greatest stains, and free them from the chains of reproach, shame, crimes, and remorse. To all those who have all the history of their faults, of their offenses to my law. Everything is prepared with wisdom in the universe. I'm speaking to the worlds, to all my children, in the way that I have to communicate with each one of them to bring them to the perfect communication from spirit to spirit, to bring them to the perfection that is the goal that waits everyone. Are you spiritually one of the most advanced in the world or universe? Do you pretend to know because you could not understand? In the second era I told you, in the Father's house, there are many mansions. Today I tell you in your own language, in the universe created by me, there are many worlds populated by my children of my divinity. You are all alike and brothers in me. And if in the present you are different in your imperfection, in perfection you will all be equal. To that perfection you drive and for you to reach it, I prepare you with doctrine, tests, and polish. 
Towards communication with my divine spirit, I direct you all equally. And towards communication of one with the other, I lead you to. When will this communication between spirits be perfected? You won't know for now. There will be many babbling, many manifestations that will be believed by some and denied by others. But the spirit, it will manifest. The spirit will speak. The spirit will impose itself in the universe. For all this I tell you, that it is not a material day, that it is not a few hours that I dedicate to you to penetrate the world of light and in places of darkness in search of the spirits that await me. No people, it's a whole time, it's a whole era in the middle of eternity, destined by me from the beginning of creation to reach everyone and manifest myself with more perfection according to the advancement of my children. Do not try to scrutinize what your spirit and mind do not yet correspond to know beyond your world. Receive what corresponds to you with respect and obedience through prayer from the elevation that leads you to me and to my spiritual world dedicated to protecting you. For that elevation and for the use you have of what in this time I reveal to you, you will get to know what today you want to know out of curiosity and that tomorrow you will know for justice, for reward, for reward, O beloved disciples. The time is coming when I will leave you without this word. When you stop listening to it, there will be sadness in many. In others, coldness will penetrate and others will remain fervent. Moreover, you ask me, what is my divine desire? I would answer that you are all of the fervent ones and that you prepare yourselves before I raise this word among you. Scrutinize my work if you want, so that you are convinced, firm, so that the doubt will not surprise you later, because it will make you suffer and stumble, because that doubt will leave you with intense pain that will remind you of your consciousness. And I do not want my disciples to carry in their consciousness some claim. I want them only to feel the peace of my spirit. If these people do not know how to prepare, if they do not take advantage of my lady's teachings, then they will miss my word and time, the trials, the vicissitudes, and the insane words of men will make you penetrate into doubt. Then you will have the disciple to stop on his way and ask himself if what he heard was true or not. And when only the apparent silently answer your doubts, you will lift your face to say to me, Lord, if you promise to remain eternally close to us, why don't our eyes see you? Why don't our ears hear you? Why don't you manifest yourself clearly in front of us? And if these people see that the doctrines of men and religious institutions rise up in great struggles and they advance in their way, winning battles, he will ask, where is the work of the Father? Why did he shut up and leave us in the loneliness at the mercy of vicissitudes and dangers? People, you will have very big doubts as other disciples of mine did in another time, and the doubt will increase 
If you remember many of my words that, according to the bad interpretations, were not fulfilled, and you will ask, why did his word not have the virtue or the power to leave his people unified? Why, with all his power, did he not perform the miracle of melting this spiritless people into one heart? Why, at the time when the Lord was teaching his disciples, did not come from all the nations of the world to hear it? Why was peace not made between humanity if he descended in power through his universal ray? By what parted in the silence between us without having been heard or glorified by all humanity? All this will burn your heart in the fire of doubt. But I don't want it to be like that. I want your spirit elevated above all doubts and uncertainties. Do not demand from the Father the materializations for His divine spirit. I do not want that after the starting from my word, you demand that I come to humanize myself, limit myself, or take the form of the Messiah as man. I want your spirit to truly follow me, not only because of the desire to fill me, not because of the strength of your spiritual need to see and hear me, but through the truth you feel me. In the serenity of your spirit you contemplate me with the faith of your being, because then you will see me perfect and immutable. Remember that in the second era men felt disappointed. They expected a Messiah full of material force to free Israel from the slavery of men. They expected a warrior prince, a lord of armies of terrestrial domains. And when these men heard the word of the meek and humble master who only spoke of the works of his father and that he promised them a kingdom better than the kingdoms of the earth, that he announced the spiritual victory of his doctrine, which announced justice for those who mourn, for the poor in spirit, for the sick, for the humiliated, for slaves, they who awaited the next instant of their material liberation and the glorification of that Lord, who longed to see him seated on a throne in this world and to see a scepter of justice in his right hand to judge the people and overwhelm the great kingdoms of this world, they felt disappointed. When the night of the master's detention came, those hearts were moved by his meekness in not putting up resistance because like a meek lamb it allowed itself to be dragged up to the scaffold and my apostles when contemplated the mockery and derision of that people they left confused and intrigued they asked themselves why the events had happened in that way they felt great love for their master and felt the pain of the Messiah, but they had not yet awakened spiritually, nor were their spiritual eyes open yet to the light of truth. And to look at his master on Calvary and contemplate his death on that outrageous tree and see that his blood flowed like that of any man, more doubt seized those hearts. How could you get up to continue the work of your master? How would they continue that example of redemption? Moreover, the master had passed through death to rise full of glory and life above all that was created. He gazed at his own and suffered from the doubts of his disciples 
and as further proof of his infinite love, after his resurrection, he let those contemplate him. The woman who faithfully loved him and followed him, so that they would give witness to the apostles of what they had seen and heard, and despite that testimony, they doubted. It was necessary that the Master was manifesting himself, dispelling the darkness of doubt and making light in all those hearts, but there was still the disciple who doubted more, Thomas the one who said that only by touching his master's wounds with his own fingers could believe that he had risen, and the master had to surprise him in his doubt as well. The master meeting his disciples in a room, lonely and moved, some believing in the resurrection of the master and Thomas doubting. The Lord appeared among them saying, My peace be with you. And calling Thomas, he showed his wounds and said, Sink your fingers, Thomas, and do not doubt that it is truly I. But Thomas at that moment, repentant in his doubt, overcome in his disbelief, he exclaimed, My Lord, but I told him, because you have seen me, you believe. Blessed are those who believe without seeing. Do you want to carry eternally in your consciousness that sweet claim of the master and that he again tell you, you have believed because you have seen? No, disciples of the Holy Spirit. No, disciples of the third era. Do not harbor the doubt. Destroy it from now on. Contemplate me in spirit. Contemplate me in my truth and in my essence, so that later, when these manifestations are missing you, you know how to look at me through love and faith, with a pure and clean spiritual gaze, without doubts and stains. In order for you to rise to fulfillment, do not expect me to say to you through the seers, get up and fulfill. Neither wait for me to come to humanize me again to be believed. This happened in the second era because that's how it was necessary and could not demand more of those disciples. It was a time when man began to penetrate with the spirit in the unfathomable valley of the hereafter. And you, who are these and those, who have evolved a lot spiritually, whom I have tested a lot and have spoken through human understanding, to deliver the truth to you and make great revelations to you, could you doubt? fall into materialization? Let the love in your heart cool down and divert your spirit from the path after the departure from my word? No, disciples. I am speaking to you, and I will still prepare you with my word, so that in your spirit only be the light, the courage, the decision, and the unwavering determination before all the tests. When I presented myself spiritually before my disciples of the second era, they felt in their spirit the true love. It was when they clasped in an embrace of brotherhood and spiritual courage to continue the work of their master. Because then, filled with spiritual bliss, their doubts destroyed. They said to themselves, Behold, we were truly with him the Messiah with the Son of God. We were truly with the Savior of the world. He has not disappointed us. He is life, the Redeemer, the truth. His kingdom is not of this world. 
His abode is the eternal kingdom from which today he looks at us, speaks to us, and he lets himself be watched. He has promised to be with us eternally. Here we are united. We are loving each other and we will give witness of him to all the peoples of the earth. Do you know if among you, after the departure of my word, true unification also comes? When felt in the depths of your heart and spirit the absence of my word, when my spiritual world is no longer heard, nor will his word affect you through the faculties, the congregation will then seek out the congregations, and those who have remained distant, acting of their own free will, will seek their brethren. They will seek the warmth and the presence of others, the advice and the staff. They will seek my word and the balm, one in the bosom of the others, and I will come again to manifest myself. Yes, my people, I will speak closely to your spiritual ear, and you will all see me. And those clear manifestations that I give you, that today you do not know in what form they will be, they will come in a definitive and clear way to get up on the road. They will be your bulwark, your incentive, so that you never believe that you are walking alone. I will surprise you on the roads in your spiritual fulfillment, in material fulfillment, and also in your faults. I will choose the right time to be present on the path of each one of my disciples. I will present and manifest in your meetings and you will feel my warmth the breath of my spirit, and you will receive my inspirations. Just as you are going to believe in me, I also want you to have faith in each other, that no false testimony arise between you, that the lie does not come from your lips to make you great or notorious among the people or among humanity. Woe to him who lies. Woe to him who say, I saw the master without having seen him. Woe to him who says, I have received this message from the Lord without having received it. Because then my inspiration will be denied and only you will recover by purifying your stains. Do not take my name in vain. Do not take my work to lie or take my spirit or my work to shield your deception with it. I want you to only tell the truth, that if you never receive an inspiration or a manifestation from the Master, be satisfied and do not lie, because that way no one will point you out. But I ask you, who can be the one who does not receive from me? Who can be the one who does not enjoy my inspiration? Who does not receive my commands or feel my manifestations? Behold, that I will not stop before your faults. I will always be before you. I will leave you turn into prophets, but true prophets, not the false ones who rise up and the rose boasting of prophecy. In the early days, my prophets knew how to walk the streets proclaiming the Lord's message. But how much humility, how much courage and faith there was in them. Times have changed and today you cannot go out on the streets, on the roads, or the small squares of the town shouting my messages at the top of their voice. Today, you have to know what is the moment when you must speak, act, and pray. If you prepare in this way, my people will not hesitate before your own testimonies. 
When you are close to a test, when my justice will make itself felt in the peoples of the earth and even in you, when it is my will to reveal an event to you, I will choose one of you to warn you and announce to you what is about to happen. I will choose two or three in my will so that that message is confirmed. But do not hesitate because with this, you would demand from the Father a greater manifestation. And don't you know that in this third era I have told you that the time of complacency is over? If you say, yes, Father, material indulgences are over, but you have granted us spiritual gratifications. I will answer, yes, my children, but if you demand the master's materialization, then that request of yours is within the material complacencies. That time has already passed. That is why I have come to strip you of many traditions, because the worship revealed by the Father to your spirit, worship wrapped in grace and perfection, you would profane it. You would make it fall into rites and ceremonies and profane festivals, and you would always be more concerned with external worship, with the fulfillment of traditions than with the fulfillment of my law and the doctrine. That is why, with the pain of some and the rejoicing of others, I have come to strip you in this time of many traditions, of many religious practices to which your spirit was tied. Now you are finding the true temple. And that temple you will find the same inside you as outside, in the infinity of the universe. Today you know that the true altar is in your heart, that faith is the lamp that you should turn on for me, that the flowers, the offerings must be your works, your merits, that the image of your Lord you are yourselves, who through you can contemplate me. Today you recognize that the source of grace is my divine spirit, inexhaustible source of perfection and blessings, that I am the work because my own work is in me and it is infinite and universal, that I am the shepherd of all spirits that in great numbers they follow me, and that finally all will come to the only fold that is perfect peace, which is the eternal abode of the spirits in the hereafter, and which the house of the Father is everywhere, and you have never left that house. Thus, your spirit will have opened its wings and will contemplate for space, the infinite, for time to eternity. On the way, the perfect and luminous path that leads you to the Father. Thus, you will forget and leave behind the traditions that were obstacles and stumbling blocks, the routine that was only the wall that had your spirit stagnant, idols and objects of fanaticism, they will be left behind and your quick and free spirit will go full of zeal, joy, hope, and faith in their spiritual future. Everything that the spirit materially contemplate as a staff to support itself, to believe and to love me, he will have left it to contemplate me with his spiritual gaze to trust in the infinite and in the truth that I have come to manifest among you in fullness at this time. By preparing ones, I overcome the imperfections of the others. Because of your desire for advancement, closer to me, elevation, 
ideal and understanding of my divine work, I come and manifest myself. I pour myself out in wisdom and in light among you. The blood of the Messiah turned into the light of redemption, penetrated and continues penetrating all spirits as salvation. Eternally, my spirit is giving salvation and light. I continually make the rays of my light penetrate where darkness exists. Moment after moment, my divine spirit is poured out, not in human blood, but in essence and spiritual life on all my children. Your future awaits you. The times are coming and they come to you and with those times, the eager crowds will come of spiritual knowledge, anxious also to destroy their doubts and to be able to find for the spirit a port of light and of peace. Humanity will come and among it, Thomas, represented by science and materialism, with his eyes prepared to scrutinize, and not only with his eyes, but with the fingers of his hand to feel, to touch, and only then be able to believe in my existence and in the spiritual events that will follow one another, one another among humanity, and of which the men will bear witness so that the Thomas of the third era may be overcome by my love and his doubt and in his materialism. You prepare yourselves so that you may be apostles of the faith, so that you may be fervent disciples, those who not only witness words, but with deeds also, and thus your examples will overcome the harshness of men. I will manifest prodigies, and I will give proofs that truly illuminate the incredulity of those who appear before you. I do not ask you for the impossible. They will not be difficult works for you. Your preparation, your prayer and faith, and everything else I will do, O oh, my beloved children. Everything that you cannot do, all the stumbling that you find, you will leave to me, and I will make it possible. And then humanity will contemplate that what is impossible for human beings becomes reality through you, and those wonders will not be able to attribute them to humans, and in their amazement, they will have to go towards the hereafter to think of a supreme and sovereign power. I will come to manifest myself in splendor to destroy the sin of men. Before human power, I will manifest as divine wisdom and science. I will also come to surprise the materialism of human science. About all religions and institutions of men, I will come as a savior. I have so announced, in the fields of discord and battle, I will be present with my invisible weapons of peace, with my two-edged sword that will put to death all sin and adultery. I have come as a great warrior. How men want to see me and how many who populate the earth await me. As a warrior, I have arrived in truth and in spirit. My war has long begun, but that war is at its dawn. The strongest of this combat is yet to come. And you, whom I am training as soldiers, will penetrate into that contest. But you know that my war, it will not be for injustice, but precisely of justice over human injustice. My love will remove hypocrisy, selfishness, and evil from man. My peace will come to destroy all that have the seed and principle of hatred of discord. 
What then will my invisible sword respect, which in your hands I will deposit? The life of my children, sensitivity and virtue, everything else will fall. If I contemplate a spark of love towards my spirit, an atom of truth, a particle of love or piety for others, all that my weapon will respect. Therefore, you can understand that this fight will be great between you. But it is not only between humans. This contest is universal. All spirits will give, after this battle, a step towards true life, a step forward, a firm step towards the Father, in truth and in spirit. Don't you feel the spiritual life stirring around you? Don't you feel that within your spirit you hear the din of this great fight? Even in the moment of your deep sleep, your spirit stirs and struggles, detaches and works in the mission that I have indicated. There are the great battles that John, my disciple, contemplated through the prophetic gift. He saw the armies, that they are the same ones who are currently in full struggle. The strongest of the combat has not yet arrived. And that is why I instruct you at every moment to leave you converted into strong soldiers of my doctrine, of my law. This law that says to its soldiers, love one another. That is what the great warrior, what the Prince of Armies, come to tell you in the third era, O beloved people. Rise up with that sword of love, wield it, unsheath it, and conquer all hatred and all evil that exists in humanity. You know that from my high eternity, I wrap the universe in my peace and my blessings. Everything is blessed by me at all times. No curse or abomination has sprouted from me, nor were any of my children. For this reason, without contemplating the just or the sinners, I make my blessing, my kiss of love, and my peace. My peace be with you.